this is Decelony. And uh, yeah, I'm backing up uh, yesterday's video about Pitchfork's 250 best songs of the 1990s as quickly as I can with their um, list of 150 best albums of the 1990s. In a lot of ways, I think the way we look at music of the past tells us a lot more about the present than about the past, if you see what I mean. Pitchfork in 2003 did another list of their favourite albums of the 1990s. It was 100 that time rather than uh, 150. But that was 2003, um, much closer to the end of the decade that they were actually looking at. So I think what we can do is we can kind of compare some of the differences between these two lists. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm going to pick out some albums which are um, I consider kind of possibly quite big ones, quite good indicators of how tastes or opinions might have changed. And we can look at where it placed in each of the lists. But anyway, let's get into this first. We'll look at kind of some uh, indie alternative rock kind of pop stuff. Let's start with uh, Radiohead and OK Computer. In 2003, that was number one on Pitchfork's um, list. Uh, now, uh, in 2022, it's a number three, so it's still pretty near the top, still very highly regarded. My Bloody Valentine's Loveless was at number two in their list of 2003. Uh, now, this year, it's moved up to number one. Um, again, a small shift, but it's clearly still held in very high regard. Um, possibly slightly high regard, because I think Shoegaze has kind of, if anything, kind of become more elevated, um, more kind of popular than ever in some ways. So maybe that kind of underscores the, the influence of my bloody Valentine there. Um, Nirvana's Nevermind, uh, that was at number six in 2003. And now in this year's list, it is at number 10. So still considered important, still in the top 10, um, but maybe slipping a little. Um, maybe that's something to do with the kind of the prevailing sound and production of that album. I know a lot of people say that they don't listen to Nevermind as much. I'm probably count myself amongst them. Don't listen to it as much as they used to just because it has a certain kind of sound which which really kind of places it in that period. Maybe that slight slip in placing kind of kind of kind of reflects that. Um Blur, their Parklife album, which was kind of one of the the big albums of Britpop, was at number 54 in 2003 and now this year it doesn't feature at all. And just to back that up with another Britpop album, um, Pulp, their different class album, was number 61, so slightly below Blur, in 2003. Um, but it does feature in the 2022 list at number 71. So it feels as if kind of we're coming to terms with um, Britpop in some ways. Um, for many years, there was a kind of a, a narrative uh, about and surrounding Britpop. And... Um, I think possibly it's kind of not being held in quite the regard that it was. Um, maybe that's just my take on that. I'm not sure. Um, pulp were always seen as kind of the uh, the less brash, the more kind of acceptable, the kind of the cooler uh, edge of the big Britpop acts. So I can see why they're still in there. But Blur don't feature at all. And Oasis uh, featured in neither list in 2003 or 2022. Okay, let's look at some uh, hip-hop albums now. Um, so uh, Wu-Tang Clan, their uh, 36 Chambers uh, album, featured at number 36 in 2003, and this time around it's up to number 5. Uh, A Tribe Called Quest, the, the Low End Theory album, was at number 56 in 2003, and this year it's up to number 9. And... I've got a few more albums here that follow the same pattern. Um, Naz's Illmatic, um, Dr. Dre's The Chronic, uh, Outkast's Aquamini. So they all take a leap in Pitchfork's list of 2022. Whilst Pitchfork were always keen to focus on hip hop and pop, um, they clearly see them as having a far kind of bigger influence on modern day culture now than possibly they did uh, you know, 15, 20 years ago. I think as we've got further from the 90s, I think we've all kind of realised that, you know, it really was a golden kind of decade for hip-hop. Um, 
yeah, it's um, it's quite amazing how few, you know, overlooked albums there are in the hip hop genre from that period. It feels like, like yeah, you know, anything that you might consider you know a big album was actually a big album at the time. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting difference between the way we see kind of some of the rock, indie, alternative uh, trends going up and down. Lastly, just a quick look at some kind of dance or some pop kind of acts. Um, uh, Daft Punk's homework was at number 65 in 2003. Uh, this year it's up to number 13. And uh, Massive Attack, their Blue Lines album, was at 85 in 2003. And this year it's gone up to 61. There are also a bunch of pop artists who never featured in 2003 at all in that list who featured quite highly now this time around. So Madonna's Ray of Light is just outside the top 50 this year. Uh, Janet Jackson's Janet album is uh, just inside the top 40. And Lauren Hill, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill, is at number two on this year's list of 90s albums. So yeah, um, I think it shows that kind of, the further you get away from a decade, the more you get a chance to reevaluate it possibly. And yeah, kind of the shifts in some of the trends of, uh, you know, the albums that uh, featured last time around are quite interesting. Higher placings for hip hop albums, a bigger focus on dance and pop albums, pop artists featuring a lot. Some of the kind of genre being kind of de-emphasized at the uh, expense of others. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting comparison. I think the fact that both lists from 2003 and 2022 do share an awful lot of overlap might kind of also tell us something about how we listen to music generally now. Um, there's a kind of a tendency for people to, modern listeners, to skew towards listening to songs, not singles, not tracks from albums, just songs. I don't know what that says about the shifts in the kind of the makeup of the album list this time around. Um, I think albums are still a good barometer, but uh, I wonder whether the actual pop song list is more more informative. Uh, let me know what you think. And just a bit at the end, just for me to kind of, you know, wave my little flag for a few of my favourites, if you like. There, there are a few that I would swap in at, in much the same way that I was uh, highlighting in our um, look at the songs yesterday or in the previous video. Um, so, um, Guided by Voices are represented by the album B1000 in uh, this list. Um, it's a great album. It's a really good choice. I would happen to prefer the follow-up album Alien Lanes. Uh, that's kind of my favourite Guided by Voices album of that period. Um, similarly, Sparkle Horse, they have their Good Morning Spider album in the kind of the lower reaches of this chart. I was always a huge, huge fan of the debut, uh, Viva Dixie Submarine Transmission Plot. Um, yeah, it features one of my favourite uh, tracks of all time, uh, Hammering the Cramps, so that one would get in for me. Yeah, Beck is represented in the list with the Odelay album. Personally, I would go for Mellow Gold. Uh, it's just weirder and more interesting to me. Um, Odelay's a really good album and, and very very representative of, of a period in the 90s, but yeah, I always find myself digging out Mellow Gold if I want to hear Beck. And Pavement are in this list. I think they're in twice again. Um, their Crooked Rain, Crooked Rain album is featuring quite highly here. I think it's in the top 30 or top 40. Um, again, a good album. I'm nitpicking here. I really love Wowie Zowie. That's the one I would have if I was to, to pick another Pavement album, um, alongside Slanted and Enchanted. Um, yeah, it's just full of weirdness and personality. Um, missing records. Are there any that I think should be in there um, that have been completely ignored? Uh, there's a few I've got here. Um, I would definitely include Shellac and their Shellac at Action Park uh, debut album. Um, just a great kind of noise rock album. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk about Steve Albini too much um, in the context of the videos that I've released on the channel so far. But yeah, he's he's a big figure in uh indian alternative uh, and punk rock um 
throughout the late 80s and into the 90s. And Shellac was kind of his return to, you know, a full band format uh, after a, a period of, of uh, just doing kind of producing and engineering work. And uh, yeah, it's an awesome record. I mentioned uh, Red Right Hand on uh, the songs list um, uh, in the previous video. I said I thought that should be in. Uh, by exactly the same token, I think Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds' Let Love In album should be on this list. Um, yeah, it's just prime Bad Seeds with a great lineup of the band, just um, just showing their full range. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's Nick Cave's best album of the 90s, um, and therefore I think it should be in this list. Yeah, a few others. Um, yeah, Low, the band Low. Um, their album, The Curtain Hits, The Cast. Um, yeah, I think this one could possibly be in. They've only grown in stature over the years. And I think uh, The Curtain Hits, The Cast is the album that finds them in their early period, just kind of sowing the seeds of the directions they would take. Um, the very long track towards the end of the album, uh, Do You Know How to Waltz? is a huge signpost to the kind of the noisier, dronier um, avenues they'd be taking um, later on in their career. You know, their recent albums, things like uh, Double Negative and Hey What. Um, yeah, The Curtain Hits the Cast is a really good album. I'd have it in. Okay, yeah, so just a brief discussion of, of that Pitchfork 150 Best Albums of the 90s list. Yeah, I think it's a really cool exercise and, and having the earlier 100 that they selected in 2003 makes for a really interesting exercise in just, you know, taking stock of, of how we look at music from the past, in this case, the 90s. Anyway, yeah, go check the list out. Um, I think it's pretty cool. Um, it also happens to tie in rather nicely with my 90s Overlooked and a Heard series. So, of course, I would recommend you view all my content on that playlist. Um, um, I'm sure I'll be covering some of the albums that are in Pitchfork's list, or if not, some of the ones that I may have mentioned today. Uh, in the meantime, take care. I'll see you soon. Bye for now.